so I can use my handpiece, hold the tooth rather firmly. And reduce it just like that. If you don't wipe the wax off the back of the tooth, it'll clog up your burr, and that's what happens there. So I'm just gonna hold my burr ever so slightly over the bouncer burner and wipe that off so I can cut through the, the tooth a little bit better. Okay, same thing like the other side. I'm gonna place a little bit of wax here. and place the tooth in position in relation to the other tooth so they match each other. And hopefully when I close the articulator, the contact between those two teeth is over the midline. And that's why we like to set up the two centrals first to ensure that these two teeth match the midline according to our maxillomandibular relations. And it actually, it didn't. I'm just gonna use a little bit of wax to seal that down a little bit further. And that tooth fell off, that's okay. We're gonna put it back on here. I just have a little bit of wax supporting that tooth. And I'm gonna use some more wax to seal it so it doesn't fall off. And notice the amount of wax that I'm using is just enough to support the tooth. Most of the facial surface of the tooth is completely exposed. So I'm going to, just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna remove the pen, but I'm gonna be very gentle not to overclose this now, just to, for you guys to see that the contact, the mesial contact between one one and two two are sitting, is sitting right over the midline. But don't take your pin off with warm wax underneath because it will collapse. And actually it did a little bit, so I'm gonna have to go back and adjust that tooth a little bit. I'm always pivoting teeth around. So moving it with my number seven spatula or pivoting it around my finger or thumb. When we look at it from the occlusal view, Notice that the incisal edges of the teeth are in line with each other. If I take a little pencil and draw it on there. They're in line with each other. And we start creating the arch form. So the teeth are not straight across. There's a little tilt, depending if it's a square shape or a square tapered or a tapered shape, this angle here, this labial curvature now, will start taking shape. But whatever we're doing, the left side is gonna mirror the right side and vice versa. So this is a, an important starting point to make sure that we get on the right track. If we look at it from this view, the incisal edges are right over my pencil line and the contact being on the line. The other thing we have, we have to consider is what we call the labial inclination. If we look at it from a buccal view, the tooth now looks like it's erupting from the crest of the ridge, okay? And ideally, this tooth should not, the incisal edges of the centrals 
should not be more than seven to eight millimeters anterior to the size of a pillow. As well as, when I remove my setup plate now, and I look at the case, from a buckle view again, the incisal edges of those centrals should not be outside the lower labial vestibule. In fact, this should be around the halfway point. So therefore, these centrals are too far labially. And it makes sense because if I look at this angle again, it looks like I position the teeth slightly interior to the labial contour that I had, if it was correct. Okay? So I'm going to move these centrals back a little bit in the same position but just a little more lingually this time. So I can see a hint a little bit of that pencil line. So I'm gonna start off with the upper left. And hopefully I have enough space now between the tooth and the base plate so I don't have to trim anything. Let's see. So I'll move one. Close the articulator. No, it looks like it's interfering. So the cervical third of this tooth now is interfering with the base plate. So I can do a number of things. Trim the base plate, or trim the tooth, or trim both. And if you recall, when we were fabricating these base plates, we made a conscious effort to keep the interior portion or the ridge lap portion of the base plate, which is labial or facial to the crest of the ridge, slightly thin. So I'm going to reduce a little bit of the tooth, but be careful not to reduce the cervical margin of the tooth, which mimics the CEJ. Because we're going to need that for our wax up. I'm going to remove some of this wax here. And for good measure, I'm going to reduce a little bit of the base plate. Now, you got to be careful here now. Because if you're really thin and you think you're going to perforate the base plate, you're going to damage the cast. But I think I have sufficient thickness here, and I just want to reduce it maybe about half a millimeter. In the event that you're getting really close to the cast, you got to remove it off the cast and trim the base plate off the cast, not to damage the master cast. So just a little bit. And now I think I have ample space between the underside of the tooth and the base plate itself so I can position this central a little more lingual to where it was before. And you can see it now, it's slightly a little more lingual than before and close the articulator and see how this relates to the plane of occlusion. So when I hold it from a side view, you can see that the 2-1 is slightly lingual to the 1-1. So I like that better. And more important, I can see a hint of the pencil line, whereas this one I'm outside the pencil line. Okay. So 
very often you're gonna have to trim teeth to get them in the right position. Or trim the base, or both. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to seal this tooth down a little bit further so it doesn't move around on me. And I'm going to move the one one now lingually as well. I'm just going to heat up the wax in between them a little bit so I don't move the previous tooth because the wax is still relatively soft. Take this one out. It's stuck in the articulator of all places. If you ever lose a tooth, it's inside the articulator. Clean off the wax from the back completely. And I'm going to trim the back of the tooth maybe just a little bit more. I already did it before on this one. So just a little bit. Make sure that you don't go all the way to this little depression here between the collar of the tooth and the crown of the tooth. That's the CEJ or the cervical margin of the tooth. We need that little depression or the little notch in order to wax the case properly. So don't go too far. If you end up getting too close to that, then you know you have to trim the base plate. Okay? So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to remove this off the articulator and I'm also going to trim the base plate ever so slightly. And again, I think I have more than enough here without taking the risk or having the risk of perforating through the base plate and possibly damaging the, the cast. Don't want to do that. If I was really close, you should be taking the base plate off the cast in order to reduce it. Seal that down. Place this back on the articulator. So now I think I have enough space now between the trim tooth and the base plate that I can place a little bit of wax just to support the tooth, not too much, just enough, and bring the tooth back into position. Make sure that we're nice and tight with our contact areas up against the 2-1. And I'm using now the incisal edge as a guide. And add a little bit of wax around the tooth to seal it. And I'm going to bring the, the articulator together and see how that relates. And that looks pretty good. If I need to move it, I can use my surgical blade, which is a very fine point. Make sure that it's all the way down to the setup plate. And now the labial inclination looks pretty good. The, the teeth are a little more lingually positioned. So when we look at it from a buckle view, it appears that the incisal third of the tooth is, a, is pretty much in a straight up position and then it starts to curve towards the ridge. Same thing on the other side. Okay. Looking at it from a frontal view, and once again I'm going to remove this pin, but you have to be very careful just to take a quick look that the long axis of the tooth, which is an imaginary line running between the middle third of the tooth is pretty much straight up and down. And looking at it from an occlusal view, I start to develop a sense of, let's take this off the articulator to give you a better view, a sense of curvature, labial curvature this way, okay, with my incisal edges 
matching to each other. Like that. So depending on the shape of the ridge, you have to start shaping it towards that. Being tapered, square tapered, or square or ovoid. Okay, and this ridge, as we talked about before, it's more of a square tapered ridge. So from here on, I can move on to my laterals. I'm going to place my pin back into position. And if you're right-handed, I'd advise you that you continue with the 2-2. Two, two. If you're left-handed, go with a 1-2. Now, the laterals being shorter than the centrals, rarely you're going to have some interference there between the lateral and the base plate. So there's a lot of room. So I'm going to pick up some wax from a Bunsen burner. and place a little bit of wax there. Not too much. Let the wax cool a little bit so it holds the tooth and place the tooth into position in relation to the previous tooth, which was the central. And remember the laterals have to be elevated off the setup plate for about half to one millimeter, something like that. And again, I'm considering the arch form and make sure that my incisal edges are lining up, the long axis of the tooth matches the centrals. And it might not be 100% right now, but it's fairly close. So I'm going to seal the tooth down. You don't want to bury the tooth in wax because you're going to lose a lot of the, uh, um, the ability to assess the angles in terms of the long axis and the rotation of the tooth. So basically the whole tooth all the way down to the collar is completely exposed, way past the CEJ. I want to see as much as that tooth as possible to gain all that information. The next tooth I'm going to set up is the 2-3. I'm going to keep going with this. Now some people might want to uh, set up the other side, the 1-2, and then they go to the 2-3 and then the 1-3. But I like to keep going on the same quadrant. And I'll show you in a minute why this is so before I get to the other side. Because ultimately, we're trying to create symmetry here, a mirror image of fir between first and second quadrant. So a little bit of wax there. And again, I'm going to match the mesial incisal edge with the lateral. And obviously, this is too high. So I can take my blade and push it down and just use a little bit of hot wax to seal it so it doesn't move around on me. So when I close the case now, if we selected our teeth properly, the middle of the canine ends up being on a cane line or a cuspid line that we drew on our setup plate. So that looks pretty good. So the question now is, did I flare, let me just lock this up a little bit so it holds.
did I go out too labially with this tooth or am I too lingually with this tooth? It's hard to tell now. Did I over rotate this tooth or under rotate this tooth? What's going to determine the rotation of the canine is the first bicuspid. So I'm gonna take my maxillary posterior teeth. I'm gonna remove my first bicuspid. Okay? And the lingual cusp of the first bicuspid is going to be positioned over that line that we drew earlier. So once again, before I start trimming the tooth, I'm just going to place a little bit of wax to see if I can fit the tooth without having to trim it. Let's see. 